So we've learned that genome sequencing is a difficult problem. It's a huge problem with as many as a billion fragments of DNA that we've got to somehow put back together into a contiguous genome. And so in order to solve this, we're going to need a high-tech method. And in order to get at that, we're going to learn a little bit about the mathematics that we're going to need along the way. And we're, in fact, going to go back about 300 years um, in order to learn that mathematics. So there was a city called Königsberg that's in present-day Russia that, in some sense, was a city of bridges. Pittsburgh here, where Carnegie Mellon is, is also a city of bridges. We have over 400 bridges in the city. Um, and in Königsberg, they had seven bridges that crossed the river that the city was on. And the residents had a simple question, which is that they enjoyed taking walks throughout the city, and they were curious, is it possible to start at home, walk through the city crossing every bridge that I've highlighted in blue there exactly once, and then return home to where they started? So they have to use every bridge, they can't use any bridge more than once, and they have to come back to where they started. And so maybe you can see a solution. They were unable to find one, but maybe you see one. What actually happened was they wrote to a famous mathematician, Leonard Euler, in 1735 and asked him what he thought because they said, we cannot find one. And Euler wrote back um, relatively quickly and said, yes, I found an approach to answer this question. But his approach was able to answer this question for any city. It didn't have anything to do with Königsberg. It could be generalized for any city, even a city that had, say, a million islands. And I'm going to explain soon how Euler did this. Um, for a moment, I would say that kind of a century goes by, and 1857, um, Irish mathematician William, William Hamilton constructed a board game. It was a very simple board game. It had 20 islands connected by bridges, essentially. So there were holes in this wooden board, and the holes were connected with lines drawn on the board. And the goal was to place 20 numbered pegs in the holes so that peg one was connected by a line to peg 2, and it was connected by a line to peg 3, and so on until peg 20 connected back to peg 1. So in a sense, we're walking through this board, and the goal is to find a walk that visits every one of these islands, every peg hole, exactly once and comes back to where it started. So maybe you see a solution to this board game. I would hope that since Hamilton produced this as a board game, that it actually does have one. That would be kind of cruel to produce a board game with no solution. But for now, I would at least say um, that notice how similar these two problems are. In the Königsberg Bridge problem, we want to find a walk that crosses every bridge exactly once and comes back to where we started. Whereas in the Hamilton's Icosian game, we want to find a walk that touches every island exactly once and comes back to where we started. Now, of course, you're wondering, what in the world do these two problems have to do with genome sequencing, where we have a collection of reads that we want to assemble based off of overlap in order to give us the underlying genome. So we're getting there. For now, I want to show you how to solve this Königsberg Bridge problem. We would create a network. And Euler's idea was to say, if you live on, say, this middle river island, then it doesn't matter where you start on that island. Uh, crossing the bridges is going to be the same for you. So we can condense that whole island down to a single point. So I've shown that here in green. And in fact, there's four land masses of the city. There's a north bank, a south bank, and two river islands. And we can compress each of those parts of the city down into a point called a node. And then we could say, well, let's represent the bridges just as segments um, in a network that connect these nodes. So there are two bridges connecting the blue part of the city to the green part of the city. So we represent those as two segments connecting the blue node to the green node and so on. And what we're looking for in the network became known as an Eulerian cycle in honor of Euler. So that's a cycle or a walk through the network returning to where it started um, that crosses every edge exactly once. So I think Eulerian E edge, we use every edge exactly once. And maybe this helps us see a solution, because this is a huge simplification of this problem. Or maybe you don't see it yet. Or maybe you see why maybe there isn't a solution to this. For the Icosian game, um, we call a Hamiltonian cycle in a network a cycle, so a walk through the network, that touches every node exactly once, and then comes back home to its starting node. So there are only two known copies of this game 
the Psychosian game known because it wasn't a very good commercial success. You can imagine once you solve this once, there'd be no reason to solve it again. Um, and here is one solution shown of one of the two copies known. So we walk around the inner pentagon. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And I'm highlighting the nodes that we visit in green along the way. And then we go out a layer and we visit that middle layer. And then we go out to the outer layer and walk around. And the point was we didn't walk all the way around the middle layer because we've allowed ourselves a path back into the middle layer so that we can then get back to that starting node. And the key point is that, of course, we didn't use every edge. So there's a difference between Hamiltonian cycles and Eulerian cycles, of course, where the Hamiltonian cycles use every single node exactly once and return home. Okay, So they seem like very similar problems. Um, and you can imagine that now we can move towards a completely general problem. So we might have many different uh, applications of Eulerian or Hamiltonian cycles, but they're generic network problems at heart. So we could program a computer, for example, to answer questions about them. So in the Eulerian cycle problem, we would say, find an Eulerian cycle in the network. So input the network and essentially produce a yes or no answer. Does that network have an Eulerian cycle? And if so, what is it? Or can, you can the computer somehow verify that the network doesn't have one? So we're thinking essentially of programming maybe an ant to walk through, to simulate the process of walking through the network. Um, and in the Hamiltonian cycle problem, which I've abbreviated as HCP, we want to find a Hamiltonian cycle in the network. So we input the network into the computer, and we want to des design some algorithm, some sequence of steps that will either return yes and find a Hamiltonian cycle in the network if it has one, or verify that the network doesn't have one. Okay, So they, they're simple problems to formulate, and they're completely general now. Now, let's come back and think about these in terms of the two examples that we have. Um, so if we've seen this with respect to the Hamiltonian cycles, if there were a solution to the Königsberg bridge problem, then we could find an Eulerian cycle using every edge in this simplified network. But there actually is no such cycle. So the question is why? And people usually start to realize that the issue is that, for example, if you look at that red node, the red node has three edges that leave it. So that means if you start at the red node, it's possible to leave it by one edge. And then you can come back by one of the two remaining possibilities. But you only have one possibility to leave, and then you're not able to come back in. For the same reasoning, if you didn't start at the red node, you could enter the red node, you could leave the red node, and you could enter it again, but you couldn't leave. So there's no way of forming a cycle without using the same edge more than once. And we can generalize this idea to say, well, each node cannot have an uh, odd number of edges that are connected to it. So for example, we can make um, this network have an Eulerian cycle if we add a couple of edges. And now you'll notice that the number of edges touching each node is even instead of odd. So I'll show you the cycle that we have. We could start at blue and go over to orange and walk around the outside of the network and then over to orange, over to green, back down to red, back up to green. We've got one edge left and it leads us back to our starting node at blue. So We've seen um, how to essentially frame uh, walking through Königsberg as an Eulerian cycle problem. We've seen how to frame the Icosian game as one example of a much more general Hamiltonian cycle problem. And we want to see if we can solve these two problems and then come back to the issue of how they might be connected to the computational biology problem of assembling little pieces of DNA into a contiguous genome. And that's what we'll do next.